All right, today we're going to be talking about the most misunderstood parable of all time. Maybe not of all time, but I don't know. Mark chapter 4, verse 34. He did not speak to them without a parable, but in private to his own disciples, he explained everything. All right, so just keep this in mind. Whenever Jesus in public, he spoke in parables. Whenever he's in private, he explains things to his disciples. Again, Matthew chapter 13, all these things Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he said nothing to them without a parable. Of course, when Jesus leaves the crowds and it's just him and the disciples, he explains the parables. Now let's move on to Luke chapter 14. Jesus heals a man on the Sabbath and the Pharisees were watching. And then he starts telling a bunch of parables, the parables of the wedding feast, the great banquet. And here we see great crowds accompanying him. More parables. Salt without taste is worthless. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Move on to Luke chapter 15. More parables. Lost sheep, lost coin. This is in public. The tax collectors and the sinners were all drawing near to him. The Pharisees and the scribes grumbled. The parable of the prodigal son, the lost coin. And you'll see a theme throughout a bunch of these parables is, you know, the rich people are not going to enter the kingdom and then the poor, humble people are going to enter the kingdom. Jesus is clearly just throwing shots at the Pharisees because they were lovers of money and they heard these things and ridiculed him. And now we see another parable, the rich man and Lazarus, the rich and the poor, the first and the last. Please remember, Jesus is in public here. He is speaking parables. He's not speaking 100% true literal stories that are actually happening or happened in the past. Here we see a rich man and a poor man named Lazarus. And when the poor man died, he went to Abraham's side and the rich man died. And then he went to Hades. Key word here is Hades, not hell. Please note that Hades is not hell. Being in torment, the rich man and Abraham and Lazarus, they have this conversation. So in this parable, we see the rich man burning in anguish, torment, not having a good time. And he's casually having a conversation with Abraham and Lazarus and, and they're just being comforted in Abraham's bosom, right? A lot of people, when they read this, they think, okay, this is heaven and hell. Of course, that doesn't say that anywhere in this parable. And even if it did, it's still a parable. Now, if you just read this, how you're supposed to take it, it's just, okay, rich and the poor, you know, first and the last. It's just another parable against the Pharisees. To overanalyze each and every word and think that people are actually being in torment right now as we speak in Hades is to completely miss the point. If you want to know all about the intermediate state, which is Hades slash shield, then go watch this video on my channel I posted nine days ago, but I will go into it a little bit today. For those of you that don't know, when people die, they just go to Sheol, which just means the grave. And the New Testament and Greek equivalent to that is Hades. Of course, we saw in Luke chapter 16. And when we read Ecclesiastes chapter 9, there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol to which you are going. And he's speaking to you. You're going to go to Sheol. Everybody goes to Sheol after they die. Because Sheol is just the grave. Even Jesus himself says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, the son of man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Sheol. Even Jesus didn't go up to heaven to be comforted when he died. No, he was in Sheol. He was in the grave. Again, Hosea chapter 13, God says he will ransom his people from the power of Sheol. He shall redeem them from death. Oh, Sheol, where is your sting? Even when Jacob thought that his son Joseph died, he said, no, I shall go down to Sheol to my son. You see, everybody after they die goes to Sheol slash Hades because this is where everybody goes to sleep in the dust of the earth until they awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting in contempt. Now, you see how I'm using scripture to interpret scripture. We have a lot of very clear verses telling us what happens to people after they die. They go to Sheol, they sleep in the dust of the earth until they are waken up at the final judgment. Now, of course, if you read this parable out of context while you ignore the clear teaching of the rest of scripture, you can totally believe that people become disembodied spirits and go to a place called Hades if they were bad and they go to torment and then they could just casually have conversations with the people who went to Abraham. Abraham's bosom or heaven. Of course, it's better to read all of the Bible together in context so that you have better understanding of what the truth actually is. Now, some people think that when Jesus came, he actually took all of the people who were in Abraham's bosom back up to heaven. So right now, people actually are still in torment or something or that people are in heaven. But of course, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 it tells us that all of the people who have fallen asleep, again, similar language we saw in Daniel chapter 12, the people are asleep in the dust of the earth. And then when Jesus comes back, he's going to raise everybody from the dead. All right, so hopefully you understand this parable a little bit more. Also, a lot of people use this parable, come at me to tell me that God does torture people for eternity. But of course, I just love to go to Revelation chapter 21, where God promises 
to wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death shall be no more. There shall be no more mourning, nor crying, nor pain, for the former things have passed away. See, pain doesn't exist. Mourning doesn't exist. Death doesn't exist. Those are the former things that have passed away. Now, the people who think that God tortures people for eternity in a place called hell will tell me that this is only for the people from the perspective who are living forever with God and, and peace and stuff like that, which just makes no sense because you just told me in Luke 16 that, you know, the people are they're just having casual conversations with the people who are being tortured. You know, doesn't make any sense. What actually happens is when Jesus comes back, he is going to raise everybody from the dead, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. And according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, all of the believers will receive immortality, brand new spiritual bodies like Jesus's that live forever. And then all the people whose names were not found in the book of life are thrown into hell, the lake of fire. And this is called literally the second death, the lake of fire, hell. And people don't live forever there. They go there to die for the second time. And you'll notice how Hades was thrown into hell. Okay, so if you think Hades is actually hell where people are being tormented, you would say that hell has to get thrown into hell, which makes no sense. You see, death itself doesn't exist anymore after being thrown into the lake of fire. And the same thing happens to Hades because Hades doesn't, doesn't need, there's no people who are dead in the grave waiting to be resurrected anymore. Hades doesn't exist anymore. Same thing with all of the people who get thrown into the lake of fire. They will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of God and then die for the second time. See, so yeah, I just wanted to make this video so that I can link it to the people who don't understand that parable and are confused about what the Bible actually teaches about the intermediate state. What happens to people in between the time that they die and the resurrection. It's really simple, but because biblical eschatology is not really being preached in the United States anymore, more I have to make these kinds of videos and of course I enjoy it I love doing this I love you guys so much